Hi everyone, this is James at dreamweavertutorial.co.uk and I've put together a tutorial based upon the Series 3 slider plugin which is a jQuery animated image rotator and fader. It has an animated overlay which you can place headings and descriptions and also links into. Now I've programmed the slideshow for the overlay to come from the top, the right, the bottom and the left in order to give you guys all the available options to put this fantastic plugin onto your site. Now when you roll over one of the overlays, the image rotator will stop and allows your visitors to read the caption and if necessary click on any link that you provide. Now when you move the mouse pointer away from the image and overlay, the slideshow then resumes. Okay, so this slider is available for a free download, so if you're watching this video on YouTube there will be a link in the description box which will take you to my website dreamweavertutorial.co.uk for you to download the plugin. If you're already at my website the button is just below the video. When you've downloaded the file there will be a folder called IMG Rotator. If you double click on that you'll find that there's a CSS folder, an empty CSS folder. There will be an images folder with five images inside of it. There's a JS folder which contains a jQuery JavaScript library and there's some lorem ipsum and text and some script hooks. Now let's take a look inside the images folder and you'll see a folder called slider images where there are five images that I used at the start of the tutorial and they're 950 pixels in width by 300 pixels in height. Inside the JS folder there is the jQuery library and the S3 slider plugin script files. There's also some lorem ipsum text which you can use to populate the paragraph tags and we've got some script hooks which uh, we will place in the head of the document which will allow us to animate the jQuery slider plugin. Now I recommend you define a new site and call it IMG Rotator and that way you can practice this before you try to attempt to put it into your own website. Now if you define the site correctly you'll find that there's the CSS folder, the images folder, the JavaScript folder with the library and the slider plugin and you'll have all of the images necessary to complete this tutorial. Now I've created a page called web page and uh, I'm going to double click on that to bring it up and I'm going to be using that to place the slider in for the example for this tutorial. So if I click on that now, I open up the page and uh, it's very similar to the last tutorial I made for the jQuery carousel. Now I've got a space which is the same space for the images which is 950 pixels in width by 300 pixels in height and the images are exactly the same width as that, width and height as that. So that's what you will need to do if you're going to make your own images for your own slider plugin. Now here's the element. I'm going to start by typing in all of the necessary code which you'll need to place to get the slider plugin to work correctly. So I'm going to create a div. I'm going to give it an ID and I'm going to call it the S3 slider. So div ID S3 slider. I'm going to close that with a comment. Okay, now inside of this main encompassing div tag, the S3 slider, I'm going to place an unordered list. And the unordered list is going to have an ID of S3 slider content. Now notice that when you place the S3 slider content, you're going to put a capital C there for the content. Now this is necessary, the script works based on this particular unordered list with that ID. So you must make sure that you put a capital C in there. Now we're going to create some list items and each list item is going to contain an image. And also inside the uh, list item there is going to be a span tag and that's going to contain a small caption or a description of that particular image. So I'm going to create a line class, li class and I'm going to call that S3 slider image with a capital I. Make sure you do that as well and close that with a comment. Okay, so if you need to pause the video, pause it. You'll need to make sure that you've got the div ID S3 slider, the unordered list with an ID of S3 slider content, and the line class with the S3 slider image. Now, all we're gonna worry about right now is that LI class. We want the list items. So inside of the list items, we're gonna place an image placeholder and also a span tag. So the image placeholder, we don't need to name the dimensions for this particular plugin, so I'm just going to type in open angle bracket IMG 
and when I close the angle bracket it will put in the forward slash for me there so now we've got the IMG tag and I'm going to put an opening span tag and a closing span tag and then press refresh now if you look in design view you'll see that an X appears it's the image placeholder there and it doesn't know the dimension so it's merely showing up as an X now we're going to place some text into the span tag so we're going to open up our lorem ipsum.txt file we're going to copy and paste you can right click and copy or you can press control C go inside the span tag and let's paste that in control V or right click and paste okay so we're now going to use the properties inspector or the properties panel and we're going to click inside of the IMG tag and we're going to use the point to file icon so open up your properties inspector or go to window properties and click on the source target drag it over to the first image which is called handle.jpg and you'll see that an image now appears inside of design view and the image source has appeared inside of code view okay so this list item and everything inside of it makes up one image and one description which will be animated inside of the jQuery slider plugin now we've got another four images so we will need to copy and paste this another four times and swap out the images with the points file icon for now I'm going to copy it once and paste it in below now you can press control C to copy and then control V to paste it in okay so right now we've got an issue if I press refresh we look inside design view we'll see that the second image is just below the original image and every time we add an image it's just going to keep flowing down the page and messing up the web page completely so we're going to need to target a CSS rule which is going to take care of that problem and hide those images now I'm going to click inside the IMG tag there I'm going to go down to the properties panel use the point to file icon I'm going to swap out the image for the hills image hills.jpg and we've got two separate images there okay so let's start creating our CSS rules I'm going to create four for now so I'm going to click inside the div with an ID of s3 slider that's the outer container I'm going to go to the new CSS rule button and click on that we're going to bring the selector down to less specific so we're going to bring it all the way down to just pound s3 slider okay so if you're just doing this tutorial for practice you're going to want to create a new style sheet at this point um, if you're putting it into your web design you're going to want to put that into your CSS file define the rule into your CSS file so I'm going to click OK and then OK again and then I'm going to create a rule for the unordered list called slider content I'm going to bring that back all the way to pound slider content and press OK and OK again and these rules are being created inside the style sheet and they'll be there waiting when we click onto our CSS style sheet file now I'm going to click on the LI class and create a new CSS rule I'm going to bring that all the way back to S3 slider image and press OK and OK again now the span tag because you might have other span tags in your CSS um, file we're going to click on that and create a new CSS rule for the span tag but we're not going to bring it all the way back to the span we're going to target the S3 slider image span okay so that way you can be sure it won't override any other rules that you set for span tags in your web design okay so let's now go into our CSS document just beside the source code I'm going to click to go inside the CSS file here are the empty selectors that are created just now using the new CSS rule button I'm going to separate them from my main web design I'm going to put a comment in to say that these are separate and these are the slider styles so I know exactly where to find them when I go into my CSS document okay so we're going to target these selectors in order that they appear so the outer container was the s3 slider div now I'm going to target that one create a bit of space in the middle there now we need to define the width of this div and height and I'm going to make it the same width and height as the images that I have to use which is 950 pixels in width and 300 pixels in height so if you're using any smaller images for your main web design you're going to want to make this the same width and height as the images you'll be using 
I'm also going to set a positioning attribute and I'm going to set the position to relative because we'll be setting an absolute position later. And I'm going to set the overflow to hidden and that's going to hide any overflowing images from that 950 pixels width and 300 height. So anything outside of it won't appear at all and you'll notice that that image has now disappeared. So if I go inside and show you in design view we've only got that one image there appearing and the other image has completely disappeared. And I'll show you if I comment that out now so it won't be in action. Press refresh and uh, there it is, the image has reappeared there. So that's what that selector is doing, overflow hidden, and it's only hiding anything outside of that 950 pixels width and 300 pixels in height. Okay, so I'm gonna take the comment back out and whatever's in the overflow will be hidden now. Okay, let's go into the next selector, and this is the um, pound slider content now this is the unordered list with an id of pound slider content that we're going to target i'm going to set the same width and height so the width of the image was 950 pixels the height is 300 pixels and it's the same uh, width as the uh, slider above now i'm going to set the position to absolute because we're going to absolutely position it inside of that relatively positioned s3 slider so i'm going to give it a top position of zero and i'm going to set a margin left margin dash left and i'm going to set that to zero as well just in case there's any margin problems i don't want to come back and sort out later Okay, so now we've taken care of the image overflow problem, we can go back inside of code view and we can copy the list item and make up the rest of our images and descriptions. So I'm going to copy the list item and all of its contents, I'm going to press Control C and I'm going to press Control V to paste it and I'm going to paste it three times because we've got five images in total there. Okay, so it's time to change out the remaining images. So I'm going to click inside the IMG placeholder. I'm going to open up my properties panel, press refresh if you need to, use the points file icon and point to the lake.jpg. I'm going to go down to the next one, click inside the image, anywhere inside the image placeholder there and drag over to the salad. And the last image, I'm going to use the points file icon and click over to the seaside.jpg. Okay, so now all of the images have been placed inside of design view here. We're going to get rid of this last image and uh, we're going to set a display property to none. And that will assist in the animating of the fading effect. It will bring it back to the base image behind of that image. Um, okay, so we'll go into the S3 slider image. We're going to float it to the left. So we're going to float all of the images to the left there. We're going to set a position of relative so that we can set an absolute position for the span tag so it will be relative to the slider image. I'm going to set a display to none at this point and uh, that will remove that last image from the area and you'll see that it's just left with that beige area now. So when it fades out it will show the beige area for a very short period of time and before it switches over to the new image. Okay, before we start styling the span tag, which is the caption overlay, um, we're going to set a clearing element because we have floated the slider image. We're going to set a clearing element to contain the float. So I'm going to set an LI class and we're going to set a multiple selector here because we still want it to retain all of the attributes of the slider image, but we also want to set a clear on it. So it's a multiple class. It's called LI class equals clear space s3 slider image so it's going to retain all of the properties of the s3 slider image but it's also going to contain a float so we're going to set that selector now so dot clear and the clear is going to be clear both so clear colon both and semicolon that will contain any float within that property Okay, so it's time to start styling the span tag now. That's the overlay. It's your caption tag that's going to come out for each image. So we're going to set the position to absolute. So it'll be absolutely positioned inside the relatively positioned um, slider image. We're going to set the font to Arial, Helvetica and Sans Serif. We'll set a font size there of 15 pixels. 